Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. This video is about the audition trick, an easy drummer, superior drummer, easy keys, easy bass. And I'll explain it real quick up front, just so I'm not wasting any veteran users' time here. But it's simply when you record something into your DAW, to the grid or to a metronome, you loop it, and then you preview your grooves or your melodies out of your tune track software in real time out of the grooves tab in the grooves results area. That's all this video is about. It's very simple. The reason why this video is important is because if you're not doing that, you might be missing the most important and fastest workflow that ToonTrack software has to offer, in my opinion. Okay? So let's get started. So I've got a metal demo in front of me. I did this for Toon Tracks Metal Month last year, 2022. So I got a full series building this whole song out if you're interested. Check my channel. Anyway, the point of this is that, oh, here's what it sounds like. So let's say we're looking for a drum beat and that drum beat we just heard doesn't exist. So I'll mute that Easy Drummer instance. Supposedly here's where we're at in our songwriting progress. I recorded the strings, the guitars, the bass at home and now I want a drum beat and, and you did that as well. You know, you recorded the kazoo or the clarinet or the harp and you're ready to find a drum beat for it. So all we hear is the instruments recorded at home right now. So what we want to do is loop that, and this is the whole trick of the video, is just I made a selection and I made sure loop is enabled, so now we're going to loop these eight bars over and over and over again because we want to audition beats. We want the tune track software to work for us at this point. We already did the hard work of recording. Now let's let Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer or Easy Bass or Easy Keys work for us because this works the same way in all four programs. First, let's point out the problem. Here's a fresh instance of Easy Drummer, not the muted one, but I have a fresh instance of it down here. Got the bright kit up since it's this is metal. And typically what we do is, you know, I got that riff in my head. You know, I'm like, all right, let's... That beat might work. Let me drag that to the timeline. Now I'll hit play. I don't like it. Let me right click on it and remove it. That was three separate moves. I dragged it down, I played it, and I removed it. Let's remove those three moves out of that workflow. That's probably instinctively what people do at first when they get Easy Drummer into their DAW, and that's how they work. And it's probably a great experience too. It's like, finally, I got a drummer. But now we're going to optimize it even more and get you flying super fast, okay? So let's not do that anymore. Let's loop our region. Let's play what we've recorded at home. And now you audition the files out of the Grooves tab, out of the search results window, all this light brown area. Just hit play on a groove. And the beauty of this is, see this little playhead? Because follow host is enabled, which it is by default, so don't worry about it. This playhead is matching this little tiny playhead here in Reaver. It's about the loop. And that's just loop, so they're shaking hands. This is the whole trick and we'll keep optimizing it, so stick around. <clears throat> if I don't like this beat, I'm not gonna hit stop and go to the next one and hit play and then hit play again, uh-uh. We're gonna play in our DAW, play a groove out of the grooves tab search results area, and then we hit the down in the up arrows on our keyboard, that's it. And now we audition seamlessly as fast as possible, as fast as our mind can listen to something and, and make a producing decision whether it's good or not. So we're just hanging back, you know, saying, yeah, snow, off with his head or whatever. You know, it's amazing. Easy Drummer's doing all the heavy lifting now. We just get to sit back and, and have fun and, and be judgmental, actually. I hit play. Down air on my keyboard. That's how fast I'm changing beats. It's a little halftime groove there. I can hit the up arrow and go in the reverse direction, too. See how fast it goes? The coolest part is this playhead is still syncing with this playhead even when I change. Watch this playhead. That's super valuable. That is what's allowing us to go as fast as we can. Um, you can also click with your mouse too. Just don't click stop. I like to, at this point, 
with my experience, I can look at dots and, and go, all right. <laughs> so if you see dots, this is obviously really busy. Right? So you can click and use your arrows. Here's a good halftime field beat. So so that's the whole trick. We're gonna I'm gonna keep going and help you optimize this, but you loop the area, you hit play, you hit play on a groove in the search results area on the grooves tab and you use your up and down arrows or you can click as long as you don't hit stop. And that will, I don't know how anyone can actually work faster than that. It's absolutely fantastic. Let's say we like this, we drag it down here. Now I hit spacebar. And now Easy Drum is playing the new beat that we selected and we already feel confident and approved of right out of the song track, syncing with the duck. And now we're ready to move right to the next riff. It's quite fantastic. Let me mute this instance of Easy Drum or I'll unmute my original one. And let's just go to Easy Bass real quick just to, just to show you that this is a universal workflow. So here I'm in Easy Bass. I'm gonna mute my original Easy Bass up here that already has the final product baseline in it. I'm using a new instance down here that's blank, as you can see. Can we see? That's not right. There we go. Here's a new instance of Easy Bass. So I'm gonna hit play, and we're gonna hear drums and guitar, but no bass, because now we're looking for bass riffs. Right? Works just the same. I already set the key. I actually, to save time for this video, I already know what folder has riffs that work with this, so. So, it's that simple, and this was probably the one I chose originally, I plus I edited the crap out of it, but there we go. So two more things. One thing is let me let me help out beginners that are not already elite in this program with just some tips that are off subject. And then let me make you aware of a bug, not even a bug, a limitation you'll run into. So if you're new and you're seeing this for the first time and you're like, yes, I can't wait to go try it. I don't blame you. This rocks. Um, let's see. Let me clear all my filters. I've got a, I've, I've got about quarter million uh, MIDI files in here. Let's say you only own Easy Drummer 3. So let me only work out of the Easy Drummer 3 folders. So I've excluded all my other folders. Only my Easy Drummer 3 folders work, right? And let's just let's go to the chorus. Excuse me, the pre-chorus. Let's listen to it. I forgot. Let me mute this. Go to the fresh instance of Easy Drummer. Starting all over, except now I'm in a now there's no drums, right? So now that you know the audition trick, well, even though you only have Easy Drummer three, I mean that's four thousand plus MIDI files to go through. You're going to be here for a week trying to figure out what you want, right? So here's just a real quick idea to sort some stuff, okay? Um, so I've already selected the folders over here and I could just say, all right, well, this is a metal beat. Is there any metal in here? There's some metal. So out of these thousands and thousands of files of MIDI, if I click on this metal, it'll probably hack it down to a couple hundred. Now you're going to find your stuff much faster. Before I hit metal, I'm going to do my number one piece of advice, which I'm surprised I didn't say first, is I'm going to select the time signature I'm working in. So now that I've selected 4-4, we can see one filter is now active. This means filters up here are sorting this stuff. You know, we've already excluded all the non 44 stuff. So now we've cut our workload down a bit. Now I'll select metal. And I assume this might be enough, but you could keep going. You want a blast beat, you want a straight beat, and march beat, a march metal beat. I'm almost curious, but um, you can decide what the power hand is. So let's listen to this riff. This should be an open hi-hat riff too, so hopefully I don't narrow my search too much, but metal, 4-4, four, four, open hi-hat. Now, now we're not going to be here for a month. Look, I can almost scroll down this entire list. 
that's as big as the list is so it's I'm gonna guess that's 50 MIDI files out of 5,000 see how much time I save there by sorting with filters a beautiful thing Let's see if we can find something spacebar the strings are playing I'm looped up here now I just audition out of the search results area I'll hit play on one MIDI file and then I'll use my arrow keys and see how fast we can find a, a drum beat arrows Ooh, it's a good halftime feel. Triplets. You get out of the triplets. There we go. That one might work. Woo! It's a good idea too. This I'm getting inspired right here. This is what I want right here. A double time feel on the snare. So that's how long it took for me to find the beat I want to work with. Now you might want to edit it later to perfect it and make your own, but that's the core beat. I know that works. I, I just quality controlled everything. So that's a way to search through your thousands of MIDI files by using filters and narrowing the results results down so you're trimming all the fat off so you only have you know the good stuff right in front of you to sort through that's how you save a ton of time so the audition trick plus using filters is going to put you there and lastly a note of, here's a note for you guys is sometimes this audition trick I'm playing it out of here sometimes this little playhead does not line up with your DAWs playhead it will sound like it's playing in time. You might not even, because it is, but there's just, it's a full measure, two measures, three measures off. So it still plays in time. It's just an equal amount of measures in time off. Now, if you even notice that, I have a fix for it, but especially when you do a melodic stuff with easy keys and easy bass, that'll really mess you up because the chords will be in the wrong space in the wrong place. The chords will be playing rhythmically in time, but they'll be in the wrong place. So go try this, have fun with this, write your next album. You can see how much faster you're going to be able to write now if you've never used this audition trick before. But if things aren't syncing up perfectly, watch my uh, other video that I put out last week. It's I forget what I called it. It's about starting your songs on measure nine. Oh, it's like the trick of measure nine in Easy Drummer is what it's called, something like that. So check that video. It's in the description or it's above my head. Click on it if you ever have sync issues using this trick. That'll take care of you. So it's Sean from Shooty School. I've got Facebook, Discord themed support groups. If I've ever made your day, consider contributing. I got a members program where I have a ton of extra exclusive material that is non-public. So rock on.